Changing his name to Swami, Bhakti Vyanta Siddhartha Maharaj. Since then, Sri Siddhartha Maharaj has established a center in Faridabad and Ambala and travels all over the world to proclaim the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and especially the message of Sri Bhagavatam under the divine guidance of the spiritual teachers. Maharaj is known for the seven days of his sabdas, but also recites two seven days festivals. However, this time around, Maharaj's schedule allowed only three days in Guyana, and we are absolutely grateful for this. I'm looking forward to every moment of his association and very happy. Lord Ram, 
वो एक्स में तो द एक्सट्रीम ऑफ मॉरल कंडक्ट ऑफ द सोसाइटी मीन द आइडल किंग एंड आइडल सन एंड ब्रदर हस्बैंड एंड फादर वी हर्ड सम डिटेल्स ये सारे When Sri Ram was in the forest with his wife Sita Devi, there were so many rishis who were meditating on a very special mantra called Gopal Mantra, which we receive at the time of initiation. This is very powerful mantra. And it descends in Guru Parampara in the lineage, starting from Sri Krishna. Krishna gave this mantra to Brahma, the Creator. Brahma gave this mantra to Nara, and Nara further gave this mantra to Vedas. And in this way, this mantra is coming in this line. And we receive the same mantra from our spiritual master. So this is not ordinary mantra, and it's not the mantra and any syllable or sentence of this material world. This is purely spiritual in nature, divine in nature. Is from the spiritual world. That's why its name is mantra. Man means mind, and tra means deliverance. One which helps us in delivering the urges of mind, because mind is immediate boss of the senses. The boss is intelligence. So, like in a company, there is immediate boss and there is super boss. Super boss is not dealing with the employees. is an immediate boss supervisor so mind is supervisor of all the senses and mind give commands to the senses to enjoy and we are along with the urges of our mind we have no connection with the intelligence where our mind Leads us, we just run there. Practicing Krishna consciousness and practicing this mantra helps us to control the urges of mind, which is very flippant in nature. These mantra, mantra, help in deliverance of the urges of mind and connect us. To the super boss, which is called intelligence, and that with that intelligence, one can worship Krishna, not with mind, but with intelligence. When one comes to the stage of intelligence, then Krishna promises in Bhagavad Gita, "The Dhami Buddhi Yogam Tam Ye Nama Bhyanti." तेषम सतत युक्ता नाम अजताम प्रीति पुरुषम ददामे बुद्धि योगमतम ये नमः एनीवन वो मोस्ट वर्शिप मी विद लव एंड अफेक्शन आई सप्लाई माय इंटेलिजेंस बिकॉज़ कृष्ण प्लेन्स आई एम द पेनोमिनेट डेनी ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस आई सप्लाई माय इंटेलिजेंस टू द पर्सन विद विच वन कैन With the help of that intelligence, one get along with me, and my bhakti, my devotion. So bhakti, bhakta, and bhagwan, three goes along with each other. Bhagwan, we all know the supreme Lord Krishna, and bhakta means devotees. And what is devotion? Three of them always together. 
But the question arises, do we have any access with Bhagwan to the Lord? We don't see Him, we don't feel Him, we have no access with Bhagwan. Do we have access with the bhakti, with the devotion? We are more or less still or something, but not too much. We perform practices, but there is a lack of absorption. Because the moment we start chanting, the mind wanders in all directions. So mind is not getting absorbed in the practices. Just like chanting Hare Krishna Mahantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Absorption in this mantra. When we chant, we are not absorbed in this. And sometimes there is even a lack of proper pronunciation in chanting this mantra. One who is always absorbed in the business, in the store, and all may just counting money. When he comes back home, his children, his wife, ask him, Chant something, chant the name of the Lord. And you know, because all day he has a practice to count and cash at the store. When he comes back home, and when he starts, when he's about to chant, he comes out, Hare cash, Hare cash, 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 cash. Hare cash, Hare cash, 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 Hare cash. The absorption is in cash, not in Krishna. Then the bhaktas, the sadhus, the devotees comes and they divert our attention from the cash to Krishna. Say, Baba, don't chant cash, cash all day. The cash will come to you with your good fortune. We are bound by our pradhaktas. Pradhaktas means the past life impressions. So if I am eligible to get and receive something, I will get it. Somehow or the other, I will get it. Of course, we get little dresses for different visions and different objectives. But this past impressions, prosperity, wealth, name, fame, defame, everything comes from the previous past impressions. That's funny point. I'll give you one story, which is a real story. There's a very important and very powerful holy place in India called Jagannathpuri. And it's a custom in Jagannathpuri temple. Only Hindus are allowed to enter there. Only Hindus. Strictly written, just at the gate, only Hindus are out. Because of many reasons. In the past, there used to be many uh, invaders trying to invade and loot at Jagadampuri temple. And sometimes, some Muslim kings, they used to slaughter cows inside the temple. And because of that, the priests of the temple, of the temple, they made a revolution. Only Hindus are allowed because Hindus are not going to slaughter cows. To maintain the sanctity, the purity of the temple. So, but Krishna is for everyone. Irrespective of caste, creed, color, the Lord is for everyone. So there was one a devotee who was always remembering Jagannath and kept absorbed in Jagannath. So because the Lord is always in the temple and only Hindus are allowed to enter in, but there are so many other caste devotees who 
why I love with Jagannath, but they can't go inside. And that's why Lord Jagannath comes out once, once in a year. He comes out, and which is known as famous chariot festival. Shri Jagannath Puri Rathyatra Festival. The chariot festival of Jagannath Puri. World famous. Six to seven million people. They come and attend this festival. There's the population of Diana, right? <laughs> There's the population of Diana. Six to seven million people. This is not even the population, yeah? It's only 700,000, not even 1 million. That many people assemble in Ram Yadra and Puri. So huge crowd. Because they want to see the Lord sitting on the chariot. And it's mentioned in the scriptures that anyone who see, sees the Lord Jagannath sitting on the chariot and pulls the rope of the chariot never get birth again. It get delivered from this material world. Never have to come back here in this world full of sufferings and problems. That's the benediction of anyone who attends that. And with that grief, so many people go and they attend this very festival. One day festival. So there was one devotee of Jagannath, but he was not a Hindu. But he is in love with Lord Jagannath. He wanted to see Lord Jagannath sitting on chariot. So in those days, speaking about so many years back, so there was no plane, there was no train, no buses. People used to walk thousands of miles to come to Jagannath Puri to attend this festival. So he was coming, walking, crossing all the forests, rivers, all difficult paths. And on the way, once upon a time, on the way, when it was about to sunset, he asked the local villagers, I'm a traveler. I'm going to Jagannath Puri. Is there any is there anyone who can host me for a night here? Just one night? Because I'm heading to Jagannath Puri. They said, yes, of course, there is one family, a couple stays in that house. They can host you. You go and ask them, they are very nice people. So that person, he approached that couple. Sir, can you please give me shelter for one night? I'm a traveler and I'm going to Jagannath Puri to have darshan of Lord Jagannath. It's a long distance to walk. So I am not going to take much time, just spending one night rest here because I have to cross forest. It's not safe to cross in the night time. They said, of course, of course, no problem. You are most welcome. You are a dear guest and you are a devotee of Jagannath. The husband told his wife, cook the best food for this family. Best whatever you can cook. And we have to give our love and affection to him. She said, okay. And meanwhile, she, he went out to do some marketing. Now she, listen to this careful. She approached that person and said, hey, look, just by seeing you, I fell in love with you. Just by seeing you. Let us stay together forever. He was surprised, what are you saying? I don't even know you, you don't even know me. And this is not my intent and this is not my mood. I am a devotee of Lord Jagannath. She said, you have to obey what I am saying. There will be no harm We are going to stay together lovingly. He said, but you have your husband. She said, don't worry, I will poison my husband. He said, no, no, no. What are you saying? I am shocked to hear this. She 
He said, if you don't follow me, I'm going to shout in the village that he's a traveler and my husband gave him space to stay in the home and he's trying to uh, offend me. He's trying to offend me and insult me. I'm going to tell everyone, even though I know I'm lying, but you, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get threshed from everyone. The village is going to kill you. So you have to follow me what I am saying. He said, Oh Devi, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. I cannot do this. And meanwhile, her husband came back home. And she started cooking and looking at this boy. And he is feeling so embarrassed. I can't do this. And she is looking fierce eyes. And he is not even contacting her eye. I will really come back. So, when both husband and the boy sitting together for eating, she already put poison in her food. Husband died. She came out running and called upon all villagers, Come, please come, help me. I am in problem. This boy is trying to offend me. Force, is forcing me to do wrong things. And he is the one who killed my husband. Villagers heard this. They started beating him. But then the leaders of the villagers said, No, no, no. We are going to hear his plea. Don't beat him like this. We do justice. Oh, noble lady, what do you have to say? Just tell us. She said, it's not my fault. He poisoned my husband, he killed my husband, and he wants to do wrong with me. Therefore, I want punishment for him. And the leaders asked him, the judges asked him, he said, I'm so innocent, I've not done any wrong. Believe me, she's the one who's wrong. She started crying and weeping, and everyone you know, when ladies start crying and everyone believes, she is right. <laughs> That's the custom. Yes? When she start crying, that means she is right. And this is the only weapon they have. To make her words true. Come true. The judges heard and they said, You are wrong! Oh boy, you are wrong. We gave you space. And this is what you did to us and our family. So we announce, don't kill him because he's a traveler and a guest to us, but cut his hands. He's trying to do wrong with his hands to this humble lady. Cut his hands. They brought a sharp knife and they chopped up his two arms. And in that state of pain, blood flowing everywhere, he got thrown out from the village. And he's calling out, Jagannath, Jagannath, Jagannath. And he's running and running, please don't go inside the temple. I'm coming to see you. That was his whole purpose. To come and see Lord Jagannath because he only come once a year. He comes out and then he goes back to his temple. The route is like two and a half miles. And then Lord Jagannath goes inside the temple after sunset. And he's just calling out Jagannath. He forgot his pain, he forgot everything. He only worried, Lord, please don't go inside the temple. Just stay outside for me. I'm coming to have your worship. So he's falling, running. And this way, when he was arriving in Jagannathpuri Dham, the chariot festival already started. But somehow, Jagannath, he stopped his chariot. Even though five million people pulling the rope, but Lord moves with his own sweet desire. No one can make him forced to move. 
He moves with his own sweet desire. So he don't want to move. He just stood there. Because he's acknowledging, he's waiting for his devotee to come. Jagannath means the Lord of the universe. He knows everything. What's happening in the universe? And he knew very well, my devotee is coming to see me. I don't have to go inside. So he intentionally he stopped his chariot on the roadside. The king employed the elephants and so many people pulling the rope. Nothing is happening. Lord don't want to go. And then devotee is running, crossing all the forests all the hard times. Jagannath, don't go inside. Jagannath, please don't go inside. I'm coming, I'm coming. He saw when he arrived the outskirts of Jagannath Puri, he saw from far distance the flag on the top of the chariot of Lord Jagannath. He saw, oh Jagannath, and he fell on the ground paying over senses. He came running and he saw, oh chariot is still on the road. Jagannath, you waiting for me? He came running. He has no hands. He made our senses just like this. And Jagannath appeared right in front of him and embraced him. No one was able to see this. No one is seeing this. <coughs> because this is sweet dealing between a devotee and the Lord. <coughs> to see the Lord, we need some qualification. Many people don't believe in the presence of God. They say we don't see God, so we don't believe in God. We only believe those things which we see and perceive. We don't see God, so we don't exist. Yes, most of the young ones they ask this question. What is the answer to this? Can we see lights and pens? Yes or no? Say yes or no. But can we see the electricity? We can see the cables, we can see all electric appliances, but we can't see the electricity in that cable. Because we can't see the electricity, that doesn't mean electricity is not present. Otherwise, how the fan lights are working? So, we are not seeing God, that doesn't mean we don't exist. He exists, but only those who are qualified, they can see Him. And they can see the past times, and the mercy, and the compassion, and the beautiful form. Everything they can see. So Jagannath appeared in front of him, and he just gave him a warm hug. He embraced him. Tears flowing from the eyes of Jagannath, and tears flowing from the eyes of that devotee. His clothes were so dirty because he was being running from so many weeks and months without taking shower, without eating, without drinking, whatever is getting on the way, it's just feeling that no sleeping, all dirty clothes. And how the outfits of Jagannath, all beautiful, clean, expensive, is wearing golden rings and necklace, pearls, Earrings, transcendental body, so pure and clean. And whereas his devotee, totally unclean. Big hairs, big beard, and dirty. The Lord embraced him. Why? If a child passed school and urine on the lap of mother, what mother do? Throw away the child? Huh? She feels so happy and delight in serving her child. Yes or no, mother is? Yes? It gives pleasure for a mother to serve her child. Similarly, we are children of Krishna. He always forgives our offenses. Always. But only one thing which he can't forgive, he can't bad on. 
if we offend a devotee of the Lord, this is something very dangerous. All the nonsense he excuses. Everything he excuses. But only one thing he won't like, he can't tolerate. Offense towards his devotees. Then he gets mad on. And that's why another name of the Lord is Bhaktavasa, affection to his devotees. A story related to this, a story, another story. There was a, a Muslim king in India whose name was Akbar. You might be saying? Big Mughal king Akbar. So he and his one of his very intellectual, intelligent minister, his name was Birbal. Very intellectual. So once upon a time he asked his minister, because he was Muslim, but his one of his wives was Hindu. He had three wives, and one of them was Hindu wife. And therefore he was giving equal respect to all religions. And he used to hear Bhagavata, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana. So he asked his minister, I don't understand, I don't understand the nature of your Lord. He said, why? What happened? I am king. I have so many soldiers. I have so many guards. But when I hear the pastimes of your God, Hindu God, why he has to run himself to save and protect his devotees? Why don't he send his soldiers and his guards? Don't he have guards? The people ask, sir, what are you referring to? Which past have you heard? He said, you look at that, the case of Draupadi. Draupadi was getting destroyed in the assembly, getting naked in the assembly. And then Krishna came and supplied so many sadis and saved and protected Draupadi. Don't he have guards to fight? Why he has to come himself? He is not a king, he is God. There is another example of Parla. Don't he have guards to protect his devotees? He himself has to come and kill his the demons. So I am little bewildered and confused. So Virbal, can you answer my question? He says, sir, you want practical answer or theoretical answer? Theoretical means from scriptures I can speak. He said, no, no, no. I want practical answer. He said, okay, sir, just give me three days. I'll give you a practical answer. He said, you take seven days, no problem. Fourth day, Virgo came. And Akbar, the king, emperor, Akbar, the Muslim emperor, he said, oh, you got my answer? He said, yes, sir. But I'm not going to give you answer in the palace. Let's go out for some leisure trip. And this place where Akbar used to reside is very close to Vrindavan. Only like 25 miles. And holy river Jamna falls there. So Virbal said, Sir, let us go on boating. Take your family with you. And I'll give you answer in fresh air, in a good environment, with nature. In close with nature. He said, okay. So when Akbar, his wife, his son, the boat and Bilbo, the minister, also that boat, and a force and his guards were also not in the boat, but they, they, in their own boats surrounding him. So when they came in the middle of the Jamuna, the river Jamuna, just in the middle, Bilbo, the minister, stood up and took the Akbar son and threw him to Jamuna. Small tiny boy, throwed in Jamuna. And he said, Foolish, what you did? Nonsense. And Akbar jumped into water, swim and brought his son back in the boat. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
You are not scared of my anger. I can write up and give you a sentence to death. Why do you do this? Yes, sir, you ask me the answer and this is the practical answer of your question. What, is the, what do you mean practical answer of your question? Is this an answer? He said, yes sir. Prove me. And he smiled. He said, sir, okay, I have thrown your son in water. You had so many guards around you. So many soldiers were there. Why did you order them to jump in Jamuna and save your child? Why you jump in Jamuna and save your child? Because he's my son and I'm attached to him. He said, exactly. The Lord is attached to his devotees. He has so many guards. He has such a big army. But when the point comes to save his devotees, he himself goes and save protect devotees. He don't wait for his guards and soldiers. So sir, this is the, this is the answer of the question. So you have a terrible answer. <laughs> I am not going to ask a difficult question to you ever. So this is how. Only devotees can see the Lord. So Jagannath appeared right in front of that devotee who had suffered and he embraced him without feeling that oh, his claws are dirty, smeared with dust and dirt and tears. Nothing. And just by getting embrace of the Lord, oh, he got so much pleasure and bliss. Just like he was waiting for this for birth and birth and birth. His hair stood on end, tear flowing from his eyes, the foam coming from his mouth, all spiritual bliss. The qualities of spiritual ananda, the bliss manifested in his body just by the touch of the Lord. And then he said, Can I ask you one question, oh my Lord? Jagana smiled. Of course. I said, he said, I have no doubt in your compassion. I have no doubt in your mercy. But I just want to know one point. And that is, what was my mistake? There was not even a wrong intention in my head. In my heart, why I got this punishment? My hands were cut. Why? Jagannath smiled. He said, I knew you were going to ask this question. I wanted to do this. So, you want to answer? He said, Yes. Then Lord Jagannath replied, Listen, only this was our cycle which was separating you from me. And that obstacle, I eradicated that obstacle and made you close to me. He said, I am not telling you. What are you saying? What obstacle? He said, there was something from your past life, some activity from past life which was separating you from me. And I want you to cut that as soon as possible, because I was waiting for you. You don't remember your past life, but I'm telling you, I know all your lives, what you did in all your lifetimes. Why? How the Lord knows this? He's sitting in the heart as Paramatma, the super soul. So he acknowledged and his record of all our lives. So he said, in previous life, there was a person who used to slaughter cows, a butcher. And he wanted to slaughter the cow, but the cow ran away. Okay? He was carrying a, a kind of a weapon, a sword in his hand. And the car ran away. And he is calling out, My cow, my cow, my cow, anyone can please 
for the cow. And then you came forward and you holding the neck of the cow and hand it over to that person. And right in front of you, he with his sword, he chopped off the head of the cow. Sorry about it. And you know, because you, you caught the cow with your hands, your hands got cut. And you know, that husband wife in the village, who are they? The same person, the butcher, and the cow. Cow became the wife, and he became the husband. In previous life, the wife poisoned the husband. Uh, so in previous life, that person killed the cow. And in this life, the wife poisoned the husband. Take for that. To every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. This was the action from your previous life. It was between that person and the cow. But you came in between. And because you became the cause of holding that cow in your hands, it was so important. Because only this was a obstacles in our meeting. Jagannath smiled. He said, you have any doubt? He said, my Lord, I already told you earlier, I have no doubt. Because in every activity of yours, there is always auspiciousness. In every activity of the Lord, we get good times, we get bad times. The Lord has nothing to do with that. He is not that free. He has nothing to do with that. This is my own previous life activities which come forward to give me happiness and suffering. My own activities. Therefore, what to do? Chant the name of the Lord. The best and the best means to get proximity and to get forgiveness. To get forgiveness of the Lord. Chanting the name of God. This is what I mean. Asking, requesting. Every month. Every single day. Chant the name of God. Every single day. Krishna has given us 24 hours to enjoy, sleep, eat, or whatever. Work. Can't you expect one or two hours from us? And because we are not giving those one or two hours to Him, we are ungrateful to the Lord. It's just like you can be alone from someone and not remain back. How to that? Ungrateful, intended. He has given us so much to us. Yeah? We're getting oxygen, we're getting water, we're getting food. But we are not paying for that. Yeah? At our home, we are using electricity. Is it that free or you will pay bill? Yes? Your phone bill? House bill, electricity, water, tax, and all that. Every facility we use from the government, we have to pay tax. And what we get in from the nature? There is no tax. We get in water, we get in oxygen. If someone getting a lack of oxygen, immediately go to the hospital. I know one hospital in Bayana. Balan, yeah, <laughs> familiar with this. Now I know the length and breadth of the ability. So Balan Prime Hospital, if you go there, emergency, I can't breathe, no oxygen. In emergency ward, they are going to give oxygen for two hours. And after two hours, when you feel relaxed, you can't just say, bye, bye, see you again sometime. No sir, no buy. You have to buy. 
<laughs> it's not this why you have been by B Y. It's not B Y E. B Y is fine, but you have to add U in that. B Y. No, why? You have to buy oxygen on there. Oh, really? But I am breathing since my birth. Nobody asked me anything. No, sir, that's different. That's from environment. But we supply the oxygen cylinder and we help you breathing. You have to pay us, right? How much is going to be? For one hour oxygen? How many? Dying stars. Five thousand, fifty thousand, approx. Fifty thousand for one hour. Okay. For getting one hour oxygen from the hospital, fifty thousand. And just count how many years we survive. How many hours? Do we have that much money to pay to the nature? No, and we not pay the nature, and that's why we have problems. Because we are ungrateful, and we are not paying to the nature who is submissive to the Lord. He is supplying us free of cost, and only expecting something little from us. What is expecting? A little love. That's all. Just love me, chant my name. And please say thanks to me for what I am giving to you. Just say thanks. And what is the means of say thanks? You know, like in a family, husband, wife, parents, children sing together. They help each other. It's not just you just saying thanks. You value that thanks to serve each other. To serve Krishna is equal to say thanks to him. So don't wait. What are you waiting for? There's the uh, negativities of this material world. Everyone is bound to get old. Everyone is bound to get disease. I'm sorry to say everyone is bound to die. Can you hold on your young age? Yes, Prabhu. Some years back you were so young. I saw you. You're playing cricket and was in college. Yeah? So much energy. But you're not getting old, I'm just saying. Can we hold on our young age? No. We all have to become old one day. Can we hold on the disease? Any problems? Health issues? Definitely when you come. Definitely is when you come. Die? Oh. Don't speak about death. Just by getting death, it is you. I am not going to die. Anyone wants to die? Any volunteer? <laughs> no man. Touch your heart and ask you. Ask yourself. Am I going to die one day? You see what the answer comes from inside. Check on you. Am I going to die? Not me. It's people who die, not me. Oh, people. So I'm not part of the people. But the answer is coming from inside. I'm not going to die. Is a true answer. Because who's answering this? The soul. It never dies. It's the body which dies. So these are three main issues. Actually, for Jaram Ritu Jaram Yami, birth, death, old age, and disease. No one can escape this. No one. 
But is there any remedy? Yes. As I said yesterday, you can't stop rain, but at least you can open an umbrella. When you open an umbrella, doesn't mean the clouds get dispersed. When you open an umbrella, doesn't mean that you are stopping the rain, but you are oh, by opening an umbrella, you are safe from getting wet. So, chanting the Lord's names every day is opening that umbrella for getting saved from all those previous lives, past deeds, activities, what we did, opening of that umbrella. Otherwise, we are going to die like this without any reason. Then we are going to get burnt again with so many problems. We don't invite problems, they bound to come. Sukham Indrika Daita Deha Nayam Deha Nayam Deha Sarvat Lavat Daiva Yatha Duk Ayatha Yatha Duk Suk Ayatha Everyone wants happiness in the life, no one wants problem. So we don't invite problems, they bound to come. Similarly, happy times bound to come. So, in this previous life, these are the impressions we are carrying. And it's so important to know this. And after knowing this, we have to seriously take Krishna consciousness, this bhakti, the devotion to God in our life, in our daily practices. Krishna is saying, I have given you 24 hours. Can't you just give me 2 hours? One more story. Today's story day. That makes easy to understand. I am not here to just give a lecture. It's not a lecture. It is something which it is so important to know. To frame our daily practices and to frame our life purely and nicely because there is going to be another life after this life. So once upon a time there was a beggar in the street who was just begging coins for his survival. One coin, please one coin for his food, for his survival. And there was a rich man Billionaire, trillionaire. He was with his guards and was having an evening walk. He saw a young boy begging on the streets. He didn't feel good about this. So he approached that young boy. Hey, why are you begging? You have strength, look good, strong guy. Can't you work? He said, yes sir. I really want to work, but no one is giving me any job. And this is because it's my fault, I'm not blaming anyone. It's just because I'm honestly saying I have very less intelligence. I always do wrong at work and my employer will get lost because of me. And that's why they kick me out. And it happened so many times. And therefore now I'm not having any job, but I need something to eat for my survival. That's why I beg on the street. The rich guy heard this. He said, but you are very honest. You are very honest in telling this. And I'm so impressed. Here's my car. Come to order my office. I'm going to give you a job. But don't beg. He said, sir, please don't take this. I'm going to incur loss in your company because I never ever did any good and gain to my employer. So, please don't employ me. He said, oh, you are so honest. And because of that, I really want to give employment to you. Come to my office. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. 
I will do my best. I will not do anything wrong. And he became so happy. And the rich guy, after walking for 50 minutes, he came back to the boy. Hey, give my card back. I'm not giving any money to you. Sir, why are you doing this? You gave me a hope. And now you're making me homeless. Just because I'm honest and just because I told you I'm too lost to your company. He said, no, stop it, no. Just listen to me. Why are you speaking every day? I don't want to make you employ in my company. I want to make you partner in my business. And his hand starts screaming. What do you say, sir? Yes. 90% and 10% that's going to be a partnership in the business because you're an honest person. Work hard and you get your share. He said, sir, are you playing with me? Don't play with my emotions. I'm not worthy of getting 10% share of your business. He said, hey, wait a minute. Who told you 10%? You just said, he said, no. You're going to get 90% and I'll be getting 10%. It's like seeing stars in their mind. And stars saying, what is this? Almost about to faint. Says, sir, are you okay? Said, I'm okay. You need to be okay. So, work hard, 90% your share. But beginning of every month, just come my home and give me my 10% share. Because I have worked a lot in my life, I don't need to work anymore. So you take over my business. Just give me 10% the very first day of the month. That's all. Come to office and I sign the agreement. And he did that. Now this boy got so much encouraged. He started working hard, selling the products, meetings and all that. He earned so much money. <clears throat> and two months, three months, four months, five months, six months passed. He didn't came to give the 10% share to his boss. And he was also worried. The boss said, let me go and find out what's happening. I'm not getting my 10% share. Understand my point? You getting my point? The boss came to his home. And the boy, he welcomed his boss. Please come in, sir. See my palace. This chandelier, golden. This pants, silver. You see my walls? All expensive stuff. He showed his house. He said, I don't have cars. I have choppers. I have helicopters. Different color. When I wear red suit, it's a red color. When I wear blue suit, it's blue color. It's rich, brilliant. The boss said, yes, yes. For me, it's not a big thing because I only enjoy it like that. But anyhow, I'm just here for a simple reason. Where is my 10%? You know that agreement? He said, which 10% are you speaking about? Hey, come on. We discussed that. 90% your share, 10% my share. He said, wait a minute, sir. I work hard day and night. I'm the one who pay tax to the government. I'm the one who escape tax from the government. I do so much lies here and there, so much to do with the, the business. You're doing nothing. So why have to give you 10%? You're doing nothing. I'm the one who do everything. Day and night, sleepless nights. You're not supposed to ask me that person. Yes? So what we call this boy? What name should we give this boy? From the audience. Yes. What kind of person is he? Huh? Say something. Huh? Gopal was saying ungrateful. What's your opinion? Any other word? Huh? Love. What did you say? Nimakara. 
accurate system, such a beautiful body given to us by Allah. All the limbs are given and oxygen is supplied for survival of those limbs. Food, water, all necessities. What do we call necessities? Comforts and luxuries. Family. Can you be just alone in the whole world? How you, how you feel if you are just alone and there is no one to speak? No friend, no relatives. How do you feel? Depression. Isolation. There are some people commit suicide. Depression, isolation. There is no one to speak. Krishna has given us body, given us comforts, family, friends, work, car, house, shelter, name in the society, what more? Everything. And when he asks for something in return, I give you 90%, you just give me 10%. Then, then people come to the Lord and say to him, Oh, what do you have done for me? You're doing nothing. You're just sitting there in the altar. I'm the one who worked hard for my family. I'm the one who do everything, pay tax. I'm the one who do so much. You're doing nothing. Why I have to give you 10%? See? Exactly the same example or story we heard earlier. The boy said, You're doing nothing. But who has given the boy? the work, the business, and everything. The rich man. Similarly, he is the richest of all rich. He has given some everything, the whole environment, the nature, the universe, the world, everything. And on the day, we complain to him, you have not done anything for me. That's why we are ungrateful, thankless, selfish. And he's only demanding 10%, not your money. Because he has enough money. He's not dependent on your money. Is he dependent on your lotus garments? The whole Gayana belongs to him. <laughs> Depend on your food, on your wealth. He has so many universes as his wealth and opulence. He don't want your ten percent of your money. He already has so much. What is asking for? Ten percent of your time. What is ten percent of twenty-four hours? The many business people. Yes, Shyam Sudha. Ten. Oh, Amal. What is 10% of 24 hours? How much? Quickly. Shan. 10% of 24 hours. It's so easy. Gopal Pramita. 2 hours 40 minutes. That's all. Am I right? Two hours forty minutes. Only ten percent is demanding. Okay, forget about forty minutes. Round figure, two hours. <laughs> save. <laughs> Demand save. Two hours only. In twenty-four hours, eat, drink, work, whatever you want to do. Just give me two hours every single day. This is what is expecting from us. And we are we are not even giving that to them. Thankless, ungrateful. This is what he is expecting. Just love. Just love. And only to say thanks to him is how to say, how to express love and how to say thanks to him by chanting the names. So that two hours, in 24 hours, this two hours is the time required to chant 16 rounds. 
That's for each and six hours. Two hours. To say thanks to that Prabhu, to that Lord who has given us everything, who loves us so much and expecting love in return. Nothing else. Is the embodiment of love. That's all. And he takes us as his children and he only wants to give love and he's expecting love. When his expectations are not coming true, then he feels sad. Don't just satisfy me giving a flower. Don't just satisfy me giving just put one coin. I'm not greedy for your flower and your coin. I'm greedy for your love. Yeah. 